All right, today on the uh, laboratory, we are working on the Department 56 animated ski slope, or the name on the box is Village Animated Ski Slope. Uh, I was told that from the owner that the skiers, which are right here in the baggie, um, go around and they would stop right in here and then she would smell like a burning smell. Um, the top comes right off. Of course, now it's going to make me a liar. Like so. Um, the first thing I noticed when I took it out of the box is it's missing its belt. So I grabbed the belt before I started filming. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the big foam base. <clears throat> so you can just work with the parts that's important. So I'm wondering if the burning smell was either the motors dying or uh, the belt slipping and then finally breaking off. I did not find any remnants of the belt in the uh, box, but I do have belts, so I'm going to change the belt and see what's going on. Give it the sniff test, because this is a pretty basic tree fell out. The unit, how it works, is it's got a, a fabric belt with a tensioner right here. Uh, kind of like the serpentine belt on your car. And it's got magnets on it. There's one right here. And the other ones are right here. That then stick to those guys, the skiers, and it goes up and down the track. So the motor is direct drive, meaning power comes in here and goes directly to the motor. There's no circuitry, there's no uh, there's no nothing. It's just power to the motor. So it says it's DC four and a half volts. The adapter that came with it says DC four and a half volts. So we're good there. Uh, it says center is positive and this says center is positive. So Now, because there's no foam base, if I do it like this, it's going to rub the pulley on the ground. So I'm going to lift it up. She's working. No skiers, of course, at the moment. You can see the... There you go. There's the pulley spinning away. Give her an old sniff test because uh, burning electronics or burning anything has a very distinctive odor. So I'm going to turn it off for a second. I'm going to add the skiers. What that's going to do is it's going to add resistance to that belt. We're going to see if uh, something happens. It's got to be over. No, oh, right there. Oh, yeah, she's running a lot slower now. I tip it sideways, but I'm afraid the skiers might fall off. Well, let's find out. I'm wondering if the motor's dying and what the smell is is the motor's getting hot. Now I haven't smelled it yet. I'm not saying it won't happen. So still doing the sniff test. Unless you uh, have asthma, the best thing is the smell. Electronics have a very distinctive smell. So if they get hot, they will emit an odor. And when they let out the magical smoke, they emit a very nasty odor. 
But I'm really, really wondering if it's just the belt was burning because it was slipping. The rubber belt, not the fabric belt that the skiers are on. Still no smell. I'm checking the gears. Maybe the lubrication might be a problem because they look pretty dry. Yeah, those gears are really dry. That might have been one of the reasons that the belt broke. Or possibly broke, I don't know, because it wasn't in the box. I'm going to put some pressure on the pulley to see if I can get the motor to overload. No, she's holding true. Next, I'm going to touch the edge of the motor with my finger. See if it's hot. If I can get in there. I caught myself on a jagged piece of plastic. I didn't burn myself. Nope. Motor's not hot. Screws aren't hot. I don't smell anything yet. Still no smell. Uh, but I want to get some lubrication on this. So I'm going to prop up the end with the pulley. I get something to put on those gears. There it is. No. Oh, lost the skier. That's what I was afraid of. I'm going to pop him off. Alright, well apparently I'm out of graphite lube. So I'll just toss that. Let's see what else I got. I might have to go grab something. Looks like I have a little bit of this left. This is Still no uh, distinguishable odor. Still no heat. Now on this one, if you have to take it apart to, let's say, re-rivet the belt for the magnets or change the felt pads on the magnets, I'm going to turn it off when one of the magnets is on the corner. So there's felt pads right here. and You can probably see the rivets right there. So to remove this is pretty simple. All these stand pipes are screws, and if you look down the holes, there's screws in there. They're Phillips, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. If you need to access the gears the, or the motor, you just have three screws to remove this assembly. And then on the back side, it looks like you have one, or excuse me, you have four screws. One, two, three four screws that hold the gears together. I'm going to check the gears though and make sure none of them are cracked. That might have caused anything to break, so I'm going to slowly spin them. And as I spin them, I'm also going to wipe the grease off that got on the pulley. Because the greasy belt means it will start to slip. So. The main drive gear off of the pulley is a standard 14 tooth gear for Department 56, which in those kits I recommend on Amazon, they're in there. 
the other gears are also in there. I don't know what they call them, but they're step gears. So it looks like the majority of this transmission is repairable. In case you're wondering, it's a four and a half volt motor and I'll tell you what it is. So if you need to find one for yours, it is an RF 500 T like Tom B like boy. It's basically an oversized pancake motor. Uh, it's bigger than what they normally use in the Max as an example. You can kind of see the diameter of that versus the diameter of this. This is what Limax uses. The Parma 56 always uses larger motors, usually because their animatronics have greater moving mass. I mean, if you see the size of this belt and the fact it has to go around four pulleys, and this pulley here is tensioned by this screw, you're, you're talking a lot of uh, friction, a lot of mass, a lot of movement. Uh, Department 56 is notorious for doing oversized components, which usually means they last longer. So. But I'm thinking that's what it was, since the belt wasn't attached, and when I talked to her and when I picked these up, the owner, she said it had a burning smell and that the characters would stop or stutter. And I'm thinking that was the belt slipping, and then the belt finally burned and snapped off. I didn't see it in the box, like I said. It doesn't mean it didn't fall out in transport because I picked this up in person. Um, or it didn't get lost prior to it being in, put into its box. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab the snowy base. And I'm going to put this back inside of it. And I'm going to let it run for a while. And then if everything's good, we're going to chalk it up to just the belt. Now, if yours is fully attached, meaning this doesn't slide out, uh, you can replace this belt from the bottom of that snowy base. Uh, since it's got a monster cutout. Uh, and actually, I'm not even sure if it's supposed to come out. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be glued in, if it's supposed to be held in with all these uh, uh, twist tie, bread ties. If it was, I have no idea how it would attach to anything. There's really nothing out here to attach to. I'm going to hold it in with my fingers. And you can see that if yours is attached, but again, I'm not familiar with this piece, you can access everything without removing the base. Now, if yours is removable from the base and you don't want to hold it up on its end to fix it, you can remove it from the base, flip it upside down so the trees fit inside of, well, the cutout. So you can use the foam, the foam base as a uh, uh, work stand. And because it's at an angle, if you flip this over and stick it back in, it's an angled work stand. So if you're sitting in a chair like I normally do, um, you don't have to worry about it being out of your line of sight. They used to have a Limax version of this that I got for parts because the characters were busted in half. It was basically just a set of skis or a snowboard going around in a circle. But the pulleys and the belt is good for parts if I have to fix another one. So if this uh, continues to work, I will uh, put a dab of glue on this and stick this tree back in. Since you can see the glue on it. To see the glue where that one's missing. Now, as far as cleaning the track, soap and water. This right here. Uh, if you have any hard stains you want to get rid of, some isopropyl alcohol and a cloth will work. Uh, that's how I clean a lot of my uh, moving tracks on my Lemax displays that need to be cleaned if it's starting to stick or bind or gum up and it's not the mechanism underneath uh, if the characters don't slide. Also the bottom of these guys have felt. If you notice that felt's dirty. Um, tape, put uh, 
know this stuff is kind of peeling, but something with more grip than masking tape. So maybe clear tape, maybe uh, duct tape. Pull the dirt out of it. I mean, these are acting like Swiffers just going around in a circle cleaning the center of the track. So <laughs> we want to uh, also clean the uh, felt. And the felt's replaceable. You can get felt anywhere. Most craft stores, hardware stores carry it. Usually it's green, but if you need to, you can find white felt. You can also use like an old t-shirt. If you have a t-shirt you can uh, that's white, you can cut off a rectangle and glue it on. Uh, I'd recommend a fabric glue. Uh, that way it doesn't soak through and create a crunchy hard surface that scratches as it goes around in a, well it's not really a circle, but in its track. This is probably the most simplistic piece I've ever worked on. No computer, no uh, fancy wiring, lights. It's literally just a direct drive right off of the power switch, which the power switch is hooked up to a four and a half volt power supply, which means it also works on Limax power supplies. So if you have some Limax displays and you lose your Department 56 power supply, it's the same size barrel, it's the same uh, style as far as the center being hot and the outside being negative um, and yeah and it doesn't draw over the one amp that uh, Lee Max is rated for some of the plugs are 800 milliamps so. So far so good. Probably let this run for a little bit. See what happens. But uh, what I'm thinking that the owner was smelling was um, the belt. The belt burning. Slipping. And the belt I put on there is not a Department 56 belt. It is a generic belt uh, from one of the generic belt kits you can buy on Amazon or eBay. Um, it's just a thicker belt. It's not a uh, thin belt like a lot of them are. So, as far as it goes, I'm going to call this one good for now. If something changes, I'll update the video. But if you have the ski, sco ski slope from the Department 56 Snow Village series uh, and it's having an issue, check the belt. Um, worst case, check the gears. You might have a cracked gear. You can either pop out the center. Like I said, I don't know if it's supposed to come out or not. Uh, don't own it but it's fully accessible if it doesn't from the bottom as you saw uh, and then you would have to pop this out if you need to work on the big belt if one of the rivets break or you want to change the felt or uh, check the workings maybe relubricate the big pulleys the the main drive pulley and the three idlers your tensioners right here and then your idler and idlers here and then your drive pulleys here um, so that's about the only time if this doesn't come out to remove it. Other than that, the gears are standard. The basic uh, Akuai kits that I recommend, uh, they carry the two of the three gears in that kit that are on here. The third gear hopefully doesn't break because I'm not sure. I haven't tried matching it up. But at least if it's the first two gears, the one that comes off the pulley and the one in the middle, which would be the first main gear um, they're easily replaceable the motor I gave you the part number and that should be easily replaceable I'm sure you can find it on Amazon or eBay it's a basic pancake motor you just gotta make sure it's the right voltage so if you get one that's rated up to 9 volts it means it's gonna spin slower at 4.5 because that's half the voltage which means these guys won't be screaming around as quick which maybe that's what you want maybe you want them to move slower if you get one that's ready for 3 volts, you're going to burn it up. These things are going to be flying so fast, they might fly off the track, especially up here at the top, where you have the hairpin. And then you also risk burning the motor up because you're putting in too much voltage. So, but As far as uh, this one, for the moment, I'm going to say it's done. I think it was just a defective belt. Added some lubrication to the gears. I'm going to let it run for a while. 
and I'll probably clean up the track a little bit. I might clean off some of this and try and clean some of the grit or dust out of the felt pads on the skiers. The felt pads underneath look good because when the skiers aren't on there, they're tipped at an angle and they go by, you can see them, and they're white. But dust usually doesn't go up, it just settles down. So, so at the moment, uh, I'm going to call this one done. It was very basic, very simple, possibly just a burning belt because the motor is not getting hot, the motor is not smelling, the motor is not emitting anything. I'm not getting any power fluctuations, they're not changing in speed, and I don't see any of that magic smoke billowing out of this thing yet, so I'm going to go for a burning belt, because sometimes the rubber belts will start to smell when they start slipping, and again, there's a lot of moving mass on this, so if your belt starts to slip, you're probably going to notice it, so until the next one. Thanks for watching. Alright, quick addendum like I said I would have if uh, there was a problem. I found a belt. <laughs> uh, apparently when I pulled out of the box it fell onto the floor and I didn't even notice it. So the belt snapped. So most likely this was the problem. Is uh, the belt was slipping and it broke. So, yeah. So I found the belt. So when I pulled out of the box to go on my workbench, it fell out on the floor. And then when I pushed it in my chair to let this thing run, I caught it with the edge of the chair. And I was able to see this thing flick up in the air. And I'm like, that was the belt. So again, that's going to lead me to that the belt was uh, vulcanized and slipping. And that was the burning smell that she was smelling. Because this thing has been running now for several minutes. Uh, like 10, maybe. And nose change still cool. If we still lift it up and feel the bottom. No heat. So, I'll let it run for like a half an hour or so. And then check on it again. So if there's any other additional updates, I will come back. But if not, again, thanks for watching. Until the next one. Okay, this will be the last addendum before I uh, call this one done. This has been running now for an hour straight. Still running. Hasn't changed. No smell, no heat. So, I am going to chalk it up to the bad belt. Because I figure after an hour, that motor underneath would be smoking hot if there's a problem. It's air temperature. So... A very quick, very short addition, so I'm going to call it good. I'm going to glue the tree in and clean the track up, put it back in its box, get ready for the next one.